Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss the morphology of the maxillary deciduous canine. So the maxillary deciduous canine, they are the third teeth from the midline. So you can see over here. First, this is the central deciduous central incisor. This is deciduous lateral incisor. And this is the deciduous canine. Same over here. This is the maxillary deciduous canine, the left side. So these teeth emerge into the oral cavity at the age of around 19 months and the root is completed around the age of three years. These teeth have a function that they may punch or they tear food. These teeth remain in service for about nine years after eruption and after that they will be replaced by the permanent maxillary canines that erupt at the age of 11 to 12 years. If you look at the label aspect, the, this is the cusp tip that is sharp if you compare it with the permanent canine. The shape of the crown, this is the crown. So the shape of the crown is basically it is diamond in shape. And this is the length of the crown and this is the width of the crown. So the width of the crown, it is slightly more as compared to the length of the crown. The crown margins, they overhang the root surface. So the crown margins are outside the root surface. This is the mesial cuspal slope and this is the distal cuspal slope. So the mesial cuspal slope is usually larger as compared to the distal cuspal slope. This is opposite in the permanent dentition where the mesial cuspal slope is shorter and the distal cuspal slope is larger. A labial ridge is present that extends from cusp tip to the cervical ridge. The, this is the root. This is a single root and usually the root it inclined in a distal direction. So this is distal side. This is the palatal aspect. If you look from the palatal aspect, this is a crown portion and this is the root support. In the palatal aspect on the crown surface, you can see a ridge that is dividing the lingual fossa into two halves. The fossa that is near to the mesial surface is known as the mesiopalatal fossa and this fossa is known as the distal, distopalatal fossa. There are marginal ridges. There are marginal ridges. This one is the mesial marginal ridge and this is the distal marginal ridge. These ridges are very low or they are very indistinct. Uh, these are not very prominent if you compare it with the marginal ridges of the maxillary deciduous central incisor or the lateral deciduous incisor. The root is long as compared with the height of the crown. So in fact, the root of the maxillary deciduous canine is longest among all the deciduous teeth. This is the mesial aspect. From the mesial aspect, this is the labial surface and this is the palatal surface. So the labiopalatal width is at the cervical area is much greater if you compare it with the labiopalatal width of the deciduous central incisor or the lateral incisor. So the labial cervical ridge is prominent. This is the cervical line. And the cervical line, it usually curves towards the crown surface. Now, from the distal side, from the distal side, the curvature of the cervical line is less. As if you compare it with the curvature that was present on the mesial side. The root is bulky, uh, but the greater bulk of the root is near the cervical area and in the middle portion the incisal aspect. From the incisal aspect, the shape of the crown is basically, it is diamond in shape. The cusp, this is a cusp tip and usually the cusp tip is slightly towards offset towards the distal side because the mesial cuspal slope is larger. This is a cingulum. It is usually present in the center, but sometimes it is slightly offset towards the distal side. This is the palatal ridge and it is dividing the lingual fossa into a palatal fossa and it is dividing the palatal fossa into mesiopalatal mesio fossa and the distopalatal fossa. Thank you very much for watching.